first discuss this whole uh, possibility of creating a whole uh, buzz around accessibility for EV in a legal sense. So just like you have, let's say, preferential uh, access for the disabled, it should be possible for EV drivers to be able to get uh, certain facilities, to be able to get to closer parking, for example, or uh, charge, ch charge uh, charged parkings. That's, by the way, there in School of Planning and Architecture. There are two charging points. Oh, yeah. In the planning. Oh, sure. Because of particular professors owning... Sneanchu and... <laughs> Sneanchu and one more, some good planning department professor. Anyway, so... <coughs> So that was one set of thoughts. The second set of thoughts was occasioned by my having attended one of the urban series lectures sponsored by the Shivnadar University at IIC yesterday, delivered by Professor Dinesh Mohan, uh, former head of TRIP and department in uh, IIT Delhi, transport research and injury prevention, something, TRIPP. So, uh, he gave a lot of interesting figures and he computed, for example, that this odd even formula, in his opinion, would reduce 1.55% of the emissions. Though it was also a subtext that that is probably not what will be said on airwaves. Uh, and at best, and even if he is wrong by grossly by assumptions of twice, thrice, it would be 6%. So he says somewhere between 1.5 and 6% is what you can expect by the science. But he also bemoaned the fact that we have become a society that doesn't bother to listen to science. What are his big uh, prescriptions? This prescription for hydrocarbons, assuming that oil will still be a powerer of a lot of our cars. So one of the big prescriptions was that petrol and diesel can be changed at an investment which seems like a lot, 80,000 crores, but which is actually nothing compared to let's say a bullet train, which is a little more than that, or hmm. compared to a 1 rupee cess on uh, petrol and diesel, which would all that would be required to meet this kind of target. And that would be more effective than this odd even or CNGification or any such thing. So he said, but nobody seems to have the interest to really solve the problem, they seem to be just create, wanting to create solutions which can be seen in the public domain. It's not sexy, for example, to have a cleaner fuel and therefore solve your emission problems. The second major thought that he seeded was this business that it only, this whole odd even formula only account for so much and no more. So what he's been toying with the idea is that let's go with the swarth of trying to get a our sales exemption or some special uh, hearing in the mind of the government, which seems to be right now hearing only CSE as an organization, which seems to have decided that lithium ion manufacturing is a bad thing to do and that electricity use is a bad thing to do because electricity is created by coal. So given these two facts, it seems to be that this silence on electric vehicles with respect to the even odd formula is caused by CSE, which is probably the major advisor to the government, which is being heard. I mean, there are other advisors who are not being heard. So he outlined certain strategies legally, how to, how even small groups can create a splash, how we'll have to create a little bit of media uh, presence as well, for which it was mentioned that Raji should be enlisted as an active member to actually do the PR into the media in the right way before this is all built up. And I don't know the speed at which this will unravel. But uh, when I realized that this was going very fast, I did call Geetam Tiwari through her, got Dr. Dinesh Mohan's number and I have called him. We have an appointment day after tomorrow at 1 o'clock in which he will hear us out. Now he is a bit of a maverick, a very eccentric kind of professor, so we don't know how this will pan out. But our aim is at least to get the, his data for that spread of various fuels and various kinds of transport options versus which kind of pollution they cause. Right particulate matter 2.5, NOx, SOx, and there was some fourth one, I think might be CO2. <coughs> that was one. And because his basic thing is, read the numbers, get them right, and then you multiply your assumptions of what will reduce what. And don't forget that vehicles are not the only cause of particulate emission. In fact, they are a minority cause. 
And we are only talking about private At vehicles. At most, they are forty percent, <laughs> and private vehicles are a smaller percent within yeah. that. So anyway, so so that was the idea, and uh, that's the action Anything? point for yeah. now. Shashank should add as to a what other. We were thinking points. of uh, having a representation officially from the group of EV enthusiasts that we have. Possibly, we target Monday, Tuesday. We'll be sending it to the chief secretary of Delhi and uh, the Delhi NCR areas and the concerned state governments. We will follow it up, assuming if Kejriwal government does not actually come out with any kind of call, even formula, because he is very populist. He may actually abandon the idea towards the last moment. But <laughs> but we might, we would still want to proceed with the issue and highlighting this yeah. and take up this issue of making Delhi and India EV friendly. Yeah, it's one of the similar stepping stone as uh, we discussed earlier, like how the disabled friendliness was evolved from a judgment from a court order. It wasn't from a legislation or an official notification or an executive order. So similarly, for EV also, because there seems to be a complete uh, blackout in so far as uh, the aspect of EVs are concerned. People are talking about CNG, visa is petrol diesel, vehicle about two liters banned. It's a complete knee-jerk reaction. So the horse, whatever has been said, we would want EV to be enabled. People to be or a, uh, some kind of penalty imposed on purchase of vehicle which actually cause pollution, and that says or penalty can be used as a subsidy for the EVs. Not only EVs, maybe <coughs> anything which is eco. In fact, if it is really true that lithium ion is a really very bad thing, then let us SB calculate it for that too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, uh, but I think a very important point that uh, Sanji made earlier is that EVs. Uh, by themselves are non-polluting. Okay, I buy a vehicle which is non-polluting. Non uh, in the city that in it the is city being driven that it's being driven in. Okay, uh, the 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 juice, the power that's coming to it, that's not under my control. Correct. Okay, that's largely under the government's control. Okay, and that's something that I have very little control over. And we okay. accept the fact that the government is actually working towards making this power uh, as so clean as possible. Clean. They are yeah. moving towards cleaner so energy. Also, it's coming from further and further away. Yeah, as the Power Grid Corporation of India is actively seeking to make the grid flat and mm. it's more or less succeeded also. Mm. So that in theory a bit of power produced in Tamil Nadu could be used by a farmer in Meghalaya. Right. But so when the grid really becomes flat, then in fact you can say that all India's averages will count. Yeah, right now we're talking about and not a Prest or Badarpur plant. Yeah, because Delhi is buying, uh, Rajasthan is selling, not buying at all, it's got surplus and uh, so if Delhi buys more from Himachal, then it's clean power. Yes. So so that was another thought. And the I think related to that, you had mentioned an interesting part that uh, uh, we must, if the issue is about the poisonous air, as Kejriwal calls it on radio, then the issue is damn well to do with the road. And it's nothing to do with the factory and manufacturing and the... Uh, production of electricity in a remote power plant. The issue is tailpipe emissions, and it's, let's stick to that. Correct. And uh, I think we should be able to make the point that there was some anticipation of the kind of counter arguments people might get. And well, on that note, let's say we are saying that 40% of the emission is from all the vehicles on the roads. Out of which, out of that 40%, 15% of 40%. Hmm. Which is actually 10% no, no, of all vehicles. 15 of, uh, uh, of 100. 15 of 100 <laughs> is from private cars. Uh, not 15 of 100. <laughs> no, sir. 40% is of pollution on Delhi roads is from vehicles. Hmm. Right? So 15 out of that 40%. No? Hmm. Then 15 of the whole. 15 of the 100. Okay. 15 of the whole. So 15% are private cars. Uh -huh. Now, so. The, so so Kedrival at best can argue 7.5. Right. Uh, even if you judge by the simple Goda logic of 15. Haan, but the audio will one car out of every two on, yeah. off the street. Uh -huh. Now the, the, what happens to the pollution being there from the non-vehicle perspectives? For yeah, example, that's, generators. That's why it's one and a half Now, if we are going to talk about generators, if you are going to talk about generators, should we also not talk about uh, net metering, which the Delhi government apparently has not implemented? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we should. Be. And this so discussion will come out very rich once we get that PowerPoint presentation, which I hope to get. Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. Right. There's a very nice uh, slide of explaining mm. what are the methods to calculate emissions mm. which orally also Dr. Mohan said he let me tell you a secret there are no authentic studies Absolutely. of 
because you, you know that because, because nobody has better said that electrics pollute more than the small super efficient cars hmm. but those cars are not in the market here in india so you talking about running the car or manufacturing no, no, no. everything on total cost on the road co- total cost i mean that they calculate that's the that total that's the, fine when manufacturing plus running uh, kind of uh, estimates that are available except i don't think yeah we need to argue that point too but much the, if you look at uh, the stuff which is there in the net whatever arguing uh, running an electric car here in india uh, is extremely polluting given that the energy mix that we get is mostly from coal okay See, i i made that point in that e2o meeting at that yeah. hotel in in uh, eros city but having said that but i also understand the difference between on road pollution versus uh, so general but, but the comparison is being made to a small european car there the comparison is being made to a small european car which is a mythical thing which doesn't exist here in india how are we comparing to the small indian car who's winning that argument by the way uh, who uh, mean the, the small smaller, european the car small european car, car is winning the argument is winning the argument is winning the Yeah. I mean, those kind of they're really crazy. Okay, they show that electrics are much, 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 much worse. Record, yeah. Which was that in yesterday's lecture, uh, Dr. Mohan also pointed out that we tend to go with these urban myths. So right now the holy cow is CNG, and some of his studies are beginning to show that actually elimination of CNG might be one of the solutions for improving particulate matter emissions. or it is tabu so nobody is going to touch it this is but that is so unpopular to say <coughs> that he literally said that you know nobody will hear me i mean i've heard i've sat in meetings where people are listening but not hearing what i'm saying because they are saying this guy is mad you can't i mean clearly when cng became popular or was implemented in delhi skies became blue again this is that's fine that's because you uh, you know did away with the particulate Yes, but then what about the uh, so special NOx? Uh-huh. He said CNG is very bad on NOx, and that's not a good way to go. As far as health effects are concerned, and so on. So the so issue is essentially he was arguing, at least Dr. Mohan was arguing for the fact that we must be scientific and data sensitive enough to actually commission studies and listen to them. But we are forever listening to journalists instead, or to people who order us such as csc chief, chief ministers and such as uh, even judges and so on and so forth in fact the focus nowadays is what is happening is whatever media is propagating that is ultimately being bought by the judiciary and that, that is becoming what, fact despite the fact is, that i may be lynched for this i am very shocked by the fact that a certain group of people even thousands of them thought that they could subvert the judicial process by not letting their bhayas rapist go free oh, what kind of law is living in <laughs> how can we not let him go free that's it if it may be a bad law but you know it's it's there <laughs> so so when we make comparison with cng even even today we need to pitch in for the ev now there is a possibility that 10 years down the line as sir said even ev might come across to be a devil But then, as on today, that is the best option available at that point of time when CNG was being pushed. No, and let's not forget, EV will develop, no? Yes. So there are bound to be improvements. So the what you sent me, Hydrocity. <coughs> Hydrocity, yeah, Hydrocity. I finally did read it. Okay. In detail, and it basically is a photovoltaic method of cracking water into hydrogen and oxygen. Clean it? It's clean enough. I don't know. It's efficient and affordable. It probably is claimed to be. And therefore, it probably is ten years before the industry will start accepting it in a big way. Because that's when it will really matter. Because then it has to translate into dollars and rupees mm-hmm. and actual machines and so on. It's a kind of fuel cell method. Right. So essentially, saying when the sun shines, you create the solar, and, and when the sun is not shining, you create high temperature turbines or uh, recombine them to form various kinds of fuel cells to run various devices. So on paper it looks so it looks good because water is a very abundant source of I mean there is a lot of water around in yeah. the sea for example yeah so if you crack it all up into hydrogen and it is a light chemical and if you crack it up at a small enough scale and that's the other question which this doesn't answer yet one of the problems with hydrogen as a fuel is that when you crack it up a very small weight of hydrogen requires a large volume or a very high pressure to keep it in liquid form otherwise it's explosive isn't it No, it's, it's, it's not explosive. It is explosive, yes, but more than explosive, 
it's a lightest known material so it requires large volume hmm. or it requires high pressure hmm. or very low temperature hmm. or a combination of so, so, uh, so this is a problem uh, so the best storage me medium for hydrogen so far has been found to be a metal hydride sodium hydride hmm. so it comes as brown powder you slightly volatilize it and it hydrogen puff hydrogen will come out so powders are relatively easier because yeah, they're not liquid fuels but at least they're solid fuels so these are issues that are not addressed in this article and, and these issues will come in the way because finally you can't be producing hydrogen and storing it overnight to using in the evenings because you need to do live things if you're producing hydrogen you better start consuming it more or less simultaneously okay otherwise you can't start having pressurized chambers in every house or every establishment so that's my guess at the current reading on hydrogen so yeah. could you university Good set of researchers in energy. Yes, it's well known for that. Let's hope we come up with something. So I'm sure CSE is sitting on reports on data, uh, like the kind I see on the internet, which are comparing Indian, an average Indian electric car, comparing that to the super efficient European cars, showing how bad they are. Okay, there's some crazy graphs out there. Okay. So showing this that. crazy graph on the super efficient electric car. Hmm. If you take out, uh, sorry, yeah, super efficient uh, uh, IC Indian car. car. Hmm. Hmm. If you take those numbers out hmm. and we try and get uh, an Indian car, say an Alto or something, hmm. and try and get some numbers from somewhere. That's what we need. That's what we need, and that's we need the we same need. thing for the for the E2. That's exactly that's what we have to request from. So that's yeah. what we need. And to do. Do. I think we'll Yeah, we need. To, they, they will I have those. Suggest that we yeah. should also include the most efficient diesel and the petrol car. Reserve the E2O. Exactly. So as to put at rest any argument exactly. when it comes to efficiency or for that matter yeah, we, on the emission. We need yeah, to find the most efficient cars. Uh, and Volvo is the most efficient yeah. one. Yeah. So the and structured argument has to be that first we have to negate the off-road pollution and emissions. Mm -hmm. I think by saying that the primary purpose of the current pollution issues in our large cities is not about overall emissions, mm -hmm. which is an actual issue and a consumption issue. But it's more tail about uh, tail pollution. Tail tail yeah. Because if bigger issue, bigger, bigger emissions are an issue, then we should all turn vegetarian first. Okay? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a huge amount of reduction of emissions that could be caused by reduced amount of fertilizer use if we all became vegetarian. But, but we're not looking at that. So once we get the tailpipe argument into the door, na, then I think we are we'll be already better off on most counts. My suspicion is that even these uh, European good cars. The comparisons is for overall. It's from manufacturing. Embodied energy. Huh? <laughs> it's it's manufacturing. So every nut and bolt accounted for. No, what data? Our pass on up. Next impossible over. Uh, no, no, that's some of the data is know. available on the net. Okay. So we don't have it for Indian cars. Why don't we go to that arena at all? Let's have. We need what what uh, is the total uh, in the running condition? See, there are two yeah. numbers. Let me <coughs> see. When we do embodied energy of buildings and running energy of buildings, this happens. So we say embodied energy of a building is say 500 kilowatt hours thermal per square meter once and a running energy of a good efficient building of the kind that I'd like to design is say 60 only. Mm. So 5 years running energy is equal to embodied energy. <coughs> but what do I total? I can't call it 350, okay. I can't call it 420. So I how do I understand what you mean. Okay. Okay. So yes. life cycle that's cost the kind of thing. Yeah, I try to do some of those calculations mm. myself and that's where... That's Too many parameters are not possible because... Yeah. No, it's only the They assume a lot no, of conversion possible. parameters. What you do in the case of buildings, and this is now established and accepted also, that we say 2.5% of the embodied energy as if that is what you paid for every year. And those are things that... And then add it to the running energy and that is what your annual yeah. energy budget is for a house. Okay. okay. Today we don't add demolition energy because it's a very goda way we have in India of demolishing buildings. But clearly we should have demolition energy someday as well. Yeah. Hey, shall we call it a yes. day, a night? A night.